Sometimes the people at Wizards forget to take their medication, which can be good for us because we get new cards like Pelt Collector. Pelt Collector says when another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a 1-1 counter on Pelt Collector. And if Pelt Collector has three or more counters on it, it has Trample. Immediately, this card seems a lot like Experiment 1, probably should have been called Experiment 2, but there is one huge difference between the two, and that's the part of the card that says, or dies. So let's look at a scenario here. Turn 1, Pelt Collector. Then turn 2 with 2 mana, we can go with some 2-2 or something, making Pelt Collector 2-2, and then follow up with a Vexing Devil. And whoever thought of Pelt Collector probably forgot that Vexing Devil was a thing. So Vexing Devil says for one mana, when Vexing Devil enters the battlefield, any opponent may have a deal four damage to them. If they do, sacrifice Vexing Devil. In most situations, opponents will take the four damage because who wants to let their opponent have a four or three on like turn one or two? But now the issue becomes if Pelt Collector is out and the opponent lets Vexing Devil die, it's going to double trigger the Pelt Collector. So if Pelt Collector is a two two already and Vexing Devil comes out and dies, then Pelt Collector becomes a four four trampler by turn two. And the rare cases where opponent lets us keep the vexing devil it's usually because they have a bolt in hand to finish it and if that's the case it will still trigger pelt collector why wizards thought it was a good idea to allow a 4-4 trampler by turn two i don't really know but i'm so glad they did because now we have a very awesome deck so let's talk about the rest of this deck since the deck centers around pelt collector and vexing devil we also have experiment one for the same reason vexing devil comes out it triggers the evolve here not as good as pelt collector but it's still pretty good and we also have other creatures to boost these guys as well we have curd ape this card works pretty well with experiment one because experiment one it works not only with power but also with toughness so if curd ape comes out and experiment one's a 2-2 experiment one then becomes a 3-3 there's also wild nakadal by turn two it can come out as a 3-3 assuming we go turn one stomping ground turn two sacred foundry and there's also goblin guide because a 2-2 haste for one it's a staple of any aggro red deck there's also the combo between burning tree emissary and reckless bushwhacker so burning tree emissary comes out we get mana that mana can pay for a lot of things but best case scenario we use it with reckless bushwhacker when its surge cost is paid it gives all of other creatures plus one plus zero and haste so we could do something like turn two burning tree emissary burning tree emissary and then reckless bushwhacker they all have haste and the emissaries get plus one plus zero not bad not bad then we also have a Tarkus command it's probably the most underrated burn card ever gives you a lot of options the two options we use the most here dealing three damage to the opponent and also giving our creatures plus one plus one in reach so around turn three or turn four we swing at the team we buff all the creatures and it's a really great finishing card lastly we have devastating summons late game if we still can't finish it off we can sack our lands make two really big tokens and that could also trigger experiment one or impel collector if they're already four fours and need something to pump it and obviously we have four lightning bolts but now let's take a look at the sideboard we have one forge tender it's really good against burn and red aggro decks and helps keep us alive then there's also two path to exiles our worst matchup is going to be mid-range decks so path to exile helps with that there's also a kataki good against artifact decks remorseful cleric very good graveyard hate plus when we don't need graveyard hate it's a two one flyer also for graveyard hate we have two rest in peace i would just use three of these instead but rest in peace takes out tarmogoy and like i said mid-range decks not good for us then we have two alpine moon we could use damping here instead but being able to get a card out for one to stop tron that helps a lot and also works well with cards like goblin bushwhacker then there's a fork bolt fork bolts good against things like humans and much little creature decks and also against creature decks we have grim lava mancer with plenty of fetches on our deck it helps support grim lava mancer and lastly we have three destructive revelries against artifacts and enchantments and that's about it so let's get to the gameplay but first if you want to see more content like this be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification so you don't miss videos but without further ado here's a gameplay and i hope you enjoy oh my god this is too good oh we keeping this so turn one pelt collector if that thing stays alive though they did mm. all right let's see how this goes start with curd ape okay so it hits and then vexing devil what they gonna do they can't let it die they let it die oh, four four trampler turn two what oh they have half the exile nope nope no they don't oh oh my oh that's nice 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 they're at 11 already oh ooze okay pull land before we play anything let's swing in they block oh this is too nice but as tramples so i was like oh the two goes over and then vexing devil you know i think ah uh, i think we just go devastating summons now and make two three threes we have one land here yeah let's just go for it this has got to be the best start of any game ever oh and there's a conceit too good too good so going into game two i'm not exactly sure what they are but i imagine there's some creature heavy mid-range decks so i'm putting two path of exiles one fork bolt two grimmel masters and dump devastating summons and four experiment ones the experiment one just seems a little too slow at times especially if we're on the draw so yeah opening hand too many lands i'm gonna mull Ugh. yeah we'll try that's a lot of lands though bushwhacker nah it's too soon for that shoot this could be really bad wild nakadal okay so we'll start with the wild nakadal and pass back ooze okay i think fork bolt is the right move here and follow up with grim lava mancer yeah that feels right so ooze dies grim lava mancer comes out and we'll swing for three back to our opponent dust squatch okay so they are devoted company hmm. with 
to do, I think. It's like a bait to try and get the Lava Master to hit there. I think we go for it anyway, though. So I think we go Burning Tree. And with the mana it produces, we'll kill the Dust Dustwatch with the Grim Lava Master. And then swing for three. What? Ah. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty good. So we have two Atarka's commands, but they can just block one. But, ah. Uh... This is a tough one here. I don't want him chump blocking and then sacking to prevent Tarkus command damage. So I'm just going to go do it now. Okay. Blocks like that. Sure. And back to our opponent. Probably should have left the Devastating Summons in. I didn't think it would go this long. Curd Ape. So maybe we should save that. We can use Grim Lava Master to hit something. Okay. Just play the Curd Ape and pass back. Aw, shoot. Okay. Let's fire it. So there goes Grim Lava Master. Back on our turn. Curd Ape again. So might as well swing with both. Jump there. But no Tarkus command. We'll play the Curd Ape and pass back. Turn a witness. Bring back Field of Ruin. Okay. So I imagine there's a collected company in hand. That's why he needs the land. Back on our turn. Land. That's not that great. So I suppose now we go with the Tarka, and we'll do it before he can sack and chump at the same time. Although he could just block and then sack to prevent damage from one of these guys. When it blocks like that, will he sack? No, so he goes to one, which means we could top deck in a Tarka. Eh, but he has this thing. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a collected company there too. Let's see what we pull here. Reckless Bushwhacker, okay. This is where it gets weird. We could swing. We could swing into the collected company. We have to block with all three and then sack that to prevent the damage from going through. Uh, how many things can he get that would actually be bigger than our guys? I mean, it sucks just to play this as a 2-1 haste without Surge, but it puts him in a really weird position where he'll probably lose whatever creatures he pulls out. Yeah, I think it's the right move. It uh, feels bad, but like, whatever. And then we shall swing with all of them. Whoop. What? Uh, He's firing it before we attack. Oh, okay, sure. He definitely should have waited though, because like he pulls two big dudes in. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's still worth attacking. So the Nine Relic can survive. Devoted Druid though will have to block. So that's what I was hoping for. Is that he's never gonna get this combo off because he's just gonna be on defense from now on. So he blocks like that. He'll have to sack to prevent that. Yep. So he's still at one. Back to him. And there's the match. Dang. That's pretty good considering that mid-range creature decks is like the worst matchup for us, and it still went so well. Oh, that's nice. What a great start. And now on to the next one. Open hand nothing too crazy but i like the double burning tree emissary so yeah we'll keep it Ooh, goblins this shall be good so we're gonna start with stomping ground so that curd ape comes in as a two three and then back to our opponent firebrand sure oh he's stuck on land oh it over it over we'll attack first no blocks from him and then boom for one of them and then boom for the second one and then boom that's pretty brutal Let's see what they got here another firebrand but no land oh Oh, dang, that's some rough stuff. All right, swing with all of them. No blocks, sure. They get a 10, and then we shall pass back. Legion Loyalist swings with two of them. Yeah, sure. All right, then thin our deck out. And what do we pull? Tarkus Command, please? While in the coddle, all right. That's not bad either. So we swing in, chumps like that, and then directs two to us, sure. So he goes to six, not quite lethal just yet. So we'll play the coddle. And I'll play that, pass back. Opponent plays another Foundry and a Bushwhacker. But he doesn't have the mana to kick, so swings in, go to eight okay how can he get out of this he can block no he can't get out of this yeah there's zero chance of him getting out of this so here we go swing with the team chumps like that and then we're going to game two all right so going into game two i'm gonna put in the forge tender thingy but i feel a bit bad because the last change i made to the deck was i took out a fork bolt to put an extra one of these in and like a second fork bolt would be so nice here but whatever i'm gonna dump two bushwhackers because they are vulnerable to the pinging and for the same reason that's why i'm not bringing in the grim lava monsters because they can also get pinged really easily and with that let's go to game two Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is one land away from being nearly unbeatable. Oh my gosh. Okay, keep. If we pull land, we insta win. No land, but fork bolt. Okay. So to start things off, let's go pelt collector. It can be pinged. So we'll see what happens. Now the foundry swings in for two. Oh, and he's stuck on one land again. Oh, it's so rough. Oh, speaking of lands, so we gotta do this carefully. Burning tree emissary. Burning tree emissary again. Then wild in the coddle is a three three. And then, ooh, you go vexing devil. I kind of want to fork bolt, but I think we're safe. Let's go vexing devil. And and swing in for four. Oh man, it's game over. It's so game over. I just wonder, did the people that came up with this card know that Vexing Devil works with it? I imagine they didn't figure it out. Maybe they did, but probably not. Knowing Wizards, they probably didn't figure it out. Back in our turn, let's make things a lot worse for our opponent. Orc Bolt, hit those two, and swing with everyone. Okay, opponent Lightning Bolt, and then we go Curdy, and there's the match. Two matches with Dream Hands back to back. Ah, oh, man. I hope every match is like this. I mean, it'd be good for us in terms of the deck, but now I'm getting kind of concerned that Pelt Collector might be too powerful. You know what I mean? Like, we might have a human scenario in the future where, like, when we made the human deck, it was really fun. But then when everyone else used it, it became not that fun to play against. So I could totally see in the future just, like, running into Pelt Collector, like, every match and seeing, like, a 4-4 turn 2 and being like, ah. Oh. 
We'll see though, we'll see. Opening hand, three lands, but I like the cards here. Pelt Collector, Nicodal Curde. Yeah, we'll keep. And it looks like it's humans. Ooh, nice, Pelt Collector. Okay, it's funny how we're just talking about humans. I must have jinxed it. I'm gonna play as champion. So champion versus Pelt Collector. So what is the right move here? I think it's Pelt Collector, Curde. And I think it's worthwhile to swing for two here. No blocks, good. And then back to opponent. Opponent Vile's in Noble. Yep, this is gonna be a really hard matchup though. We're really bad against mid range and humans can get a lot of big creatures out really quickly. And there's a Reflector Mage and opponent swings for four. Yeah, humans for this deck though, it's just, it's it's gonna be tough. I don't wanna say it's impossible, but I mean like 75% them. Look at this, like it's already a five five. And even if Pelt Collector can become a four four in turn two, it's like this guy can become super big really quick. I don't know, I don't know. So what do we do? I suppose we go Coddle. Oops, I forgot to fetch. That's my bad. And then pass back because we can't play the Pelt Collector. Another champion. If it isn't abundantly clear, they are going to win this one. Ah, humans, man. It's like we make humans and it's a great deck to play. And it's like, hooray for humans, right? And then everyone else plays it. And it's just like a recurring nightmare. It's like, it just never goes away. It's like herpes. It comes and it goes, like it flares up and then goes down. It's like, you think you've escaped it forever. And like, you haven't seen humans for a while. And then all of a sudden humans pops up again. And you're just like, oh, that's right. It's still here. Well, that should do it. All right. So we're going to game two. If only we had a second fork bolt. How do we win this? After game one, we'll have a better shot because we have fork bolt, grim lava answer, and path to exiles. And human cyborgs are pretty meh. And I feel like in this matchup, Kurt apes the card to bring out. And goblin guide isn't that great, but they have so few lands that it's not too bad to keep in. But 2 2, you know, it's only good for so long against humans. But that, we'll just go to game two and hope for the best. Opening hand. This is a very, very risky hand. If we can hit a second land, we're okay. If we don't, though, we hella screwed. But we'll keep it because we kind of have to roll the dice against humans because, like, it's an uphill battle. So to start with experiment one, pass back. Opponent starts with Aether Vial. Come on, land, land, land. Yes. So we'll fetch for a Sacred Foundry. Go Burning Tree Emissary. And with this mana here, we can go Targus Command or Vexing Devil. I think actually a Targus Command. And swing for three. Alrighty, back for opponent. And no land from our opponent. Hmm. Interessante. So let's go Vexing Devil. Okay, they let it die. Swing for five. They take it. Then we'll go Grim Lava Mancer and pass back. It's actually going pretty well. I mean, we kind of got lucky though because we're stuck on land, but we'll take what we can get. And there's a concede. Okay, we got one game. There's hope. And we kept a one land hand. Oh, feels okay now. Feels okay. You know, we should actually put Kataki in. Could actually make a pretty big difference if we get out early. But I suppose we will put Kataki in just to roll the dice and try and get lucky. That's basically what this deck needs to do to beat humans. And it'll dump one Bushwhacker. And with that, let's go to game three. Pelt Collector, but four lands. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Okay, this is good. Hopefully land on top. Yeah, we'll take it. Eighth of Isle. Then we shall go Wild in the Coddle and pass back. I'm going to play this Meddling Mage. Oh man, what they got going on name grim lava mancer all right that's not too bad so back on our turn let's fetch grab a sacred foundry swing they take it we play another wild in the coddle and i think we just go with bolt it could be risky though depending on what they play here it is kite sail no aether vial where's that kataki and might as well go bolt here back on our turn land uh, bolt that's fine swing for six they go to 11 do we keep yeah we'll keep the bolt in hand and it looks like they're low on stuff oh dang we have a shot here oh man i'm getting some anxiety now it's like i thought we were gonna lose this for sure so i thought i didn't have to stress but like now now it's like, oh wait, decisions actually matter here. One of Vile's gonna be Reflector, Reflector, okay. And also Lieutenant. I think we go and we bolt the Reflector. His Thalia without any other humans out is pretty meh. Tark, okay. We're still not doing great with the Bushwhackers though. We need another land. So let's swing for three. They take it down to eight. And I guess now we go Vexing. It puts them in a really awkward position because taking four at this point in the game is pretty rough. They take the four, all right. This could be it. We could get it here. Because with the Tarka, if we pull land, we're good. If we don't pull land, we go with Target, like it's it's looking good. They could go kite sail. Ooh, it's gonna be another reflector. Please be mantis rider. Yes. Okay, good, good. Because if they had used reflector, put that back in hand, that means we couldn't play either. Oh shoot. Another Thalia's lieutenant. Okay, sure. And it swings for four in the air. All right. Back on our turn. Another vexing devil. This is interesting. These bushwhackers not doing much here. Kind of a bummer. If we could pull the land, we would have won by now. But like whatever, whatever. Because that would have been like boom, boom, or like boom, boom. Anyways, whatever, whatever. All right. Tough decisions here. They have a lot of stuff out. Could go Tarka before they pull something like kite sail put them at one just from this they don't block but i think the right move here is going to be wild nacodle and vexing because vexing they don't have a choice and then nacodle and back to our opponent we are so close so close i'm glad i got rid of that reflector mage though because that has stayed out and they gotten phantasmal that would be bad hopefully they don't pull reflector reflector could be like the worst thing for us all that and kite sail it's like just two cards you have to worry about you go to nine they pass back there's a land but now it's like well who cares oh man oh man let's go for it they could blow us out here if they have a human though then these things survive it's like a thalia's lieutenant no oh dang this could be it they're at one they gotta play a human to block this hoe champions gotta chump i think this is it okay fetch the thin the deck my hand
hand is like so slippery right now. Oh. Okay, land, but let's just go bushwhacker. No surge or anything, just swing. Oh, and there's the game. Woo! I don't believe it. We beat humans. Oh man, that's that's gotta be like our worst matchup. Or mid range in general is our worst matchup, but humans in particular. Oh man, I honestly didn't think it was possible, especially after the penetration in game one. But yeah, that's it's possible. So I mean, so far so good. I mean, it's the 3-0 right now. So hopefully the winning train continues. Open hand, one land, but it looks like it could work. We have the curd ape. We got the experiment ones. If we pull a second land, we're okay. I think it's worth the risk. Let's keep it. And our opponent just mold the four. The three. No, you're interfering with the epicness of this deck. We need to just side if this deck is good and so far it looks pretty good oh they play, play land no big boy no all right experiment one pass back there's a land that's good hopefully this will be somewhat competitive what the hell this shit this dredge all right whatever no land for us so i think the right move here since he's going pretty slow we can go experiment one and hope for a land next turn all right pass back opponent passes back no land though well i suppose just go curd ape and then swing for four back to our opponent what the hell this shit Wait, I think there are versions of Dredge that use this card, right? Like some really ghetto versions. Okay. Stomping Ground. Then we shall go Burning Tree. Aw, oh, lame. There's a concede. So going into game two, I'm going to dump four Experiment 1s and then one Devastating Summons. to put in two Rest in Peace, one Remorseful Cleric, and two Path to Exiles. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand. Yeah, this will work. And hooray, they keep almost all their cards. Another Burning Tree Emissary. Cool. So let's start with the Wild Nakadal and pass back. Aw, oh, Lightning Axe. Then opponent passes back. All right. Time for happy fun times. Burning Tree Emissary. Burning Tree Emissary. And then Vexing Devil. Opponent lets it die. Cool. Back to our opponent. Faith is looting. Hmm. And opponent passes back. Ooh, and Remorseful Cleric. That should do it. Well, let's swing for four. And Remorseful Cleric. And I think the best move here is just to do Remorseful Cleric right now. So they can't dredge. See how they respond. Okay, nothing. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Back to our opponent. And it goes Cathartic Reunion. They make a great couple. Wait, actually, wait. Are they related? They look kind of related. But if they're not related, then they make a good couple. Do we bolt here? Might need it for Bushwhacker. We'll just go for it. But knowing my luck, we're probably gonna draw bushwhacker nope rest in peace that works too swing for four blocks like that so we can deal three six put him at one what's more relevant the target's command or the rest in peace probably the rest in peace so we play the rest in peace and there's a concede 4-0 in matches i'd say that's pretty good and with eight game wins and one game loss i think this deck will be around for a while it seems very solid i just wish we knew if wizards knew about the pellet collector vexing devil combo beforehand and if they did was their intention to try and counter champion the parish or maybe the thinking was a champion the parish is legal why why not Pelt Collector? I don't know. It seems very, very good. We did get pretty lucky against humans, though. Humans, when it works, is very good. And any deck with big creatures is a tough match for this deck, even though we did see a couple decks with big creatures. And the fact that we did so well is a good sign because there's some decks out there that can't compete as well as the decks we played. Like, for example, a slow control deck. How can a slow control deck even compete? You know, it's like a 4 4 on turn two. Like, how do you stop that? So, whether or not this deck continues to do well in the metagame, we'll have to wait and see. But that is all for now. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and let me know in the comments what you want to see next but that is all for now and as always i hope you have a great day